just sort that out and uh... oh <laughs> hello <laughs> didn't see you there well good morning good day good afternoon good evening and welcome to another edition of life on board amy joe <laughs> and yeah i'm on my own yet again chris is here but uh, because she wasn't on this uh, next video um I'm doing the intros and outros on my own, but rest assured, once we get cruising, you'll see a lot more of Chris. Not many more weeks now before she retires. How, many, how long have you got, Chris? Oh, four and a half weeks. Four and a half oh. weeks and Chris retires okay. and then... Twelve. Yeah. Seventeen and a half days. Seventeen and a half days. Not that she's counting. No. So hey-ho. <laughs> Any road up? This week's vlog. Well, we've had a... Sees us coming out of the basin in Chester. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go very well. Um, it was a week of fails, really. Um, the fridge packed up, and you'll see the problems I had trying to replace that. And leaving Chester Basin, we had a near miss. But I'll let you see that in the video. So uh, just watch what happened then. Well, we've lived quite happily now on Amy Joe for seven years in July and Amy Jo is actually eight years old in November and like living in a house appliances wear out and uh, start going wrong and unfortunately uh, our fridge on the boat has now started playing up it keeps occasionally defrosting itself when it shouldn't and also uh, the tray in the door has broken now, despite having a very good spares after sale service, CDA, which are the makers of the fridge, don't supply fridge doors. They supply all the furniture, like hinges, handles, new trays, etc., and shelves, but they don't do a new door. So we've had no choice. Uh, we're going to replace the fridge with a new one. So it was built. We asked the builder to provide us with a side door but I asked him to provide a side door that is over 60 centimeters wide. Now, for the DIYers among you, in the UK, 60 centimeters is the standard width of a kitchen unit and appliances. What we've done is bought a new fridge. In order to get it into the galley, I've got to get the fridge through between these two cupboards. Now, as luck would have it, there's enough room by about half an inch to spare because I've measured it. However, as space is tight, I've had to lift the bed or the seating arrangement in the day room because this leg protrudes beyond the edge of the cupboard and the gap between that leg and the side of the other cupboard was 57 centimeters or 20 inches uh, and I need 21 and a half inches or 60 so consequently the fridge wasn't going to go through there but it will now so my next step is to start removing the old fridge in the galley which is located just past those towels so the first thing I need to do is to remove the two retaining bolts for the door at the bottom there's two here so I need to remove those to remove these two supports from the top of the door and that should release the door from the front of the fridge <laughs> we'll see and there we have it the door is now off revealing the fridge door itself so now we should be able to gain access to the removal screws and pull the thing out oh I've got the new fridge out that's gone out lovely and I've plugged it in to keep it working so that the food doesn't defrost. However, there isn't quite enough room to get the other one past it. So I'm going to have to enlist some help to lift the fridge on top of the old one so that we can pass it through. So I've asked my good mate Ian if he's available and I shall wait for him to come and help out. So we've managed with Ian's help to get the fridge over the top of this old one, which is now pushed in and all I've got to do now is put the fixing screws in put the door on the front and we're good that's, it. that's the new fridge in just put a few bits in there to check it out 
but uh, that's the shelf that broke in the other one and the only problem I've got is the door is jamming a little bit on the cupboard as you can see but I can't bring it across anymore because it's tight against there so I'm gonna have to trim the bottom of the door unfortunately as you can see there isn't a lot of slack there but other than that job's a good one Well this morning I'm down at the uh, Ellesmere Port Canal Museum um, I'm going to help Ian today with Morning Star so he can have a little break when he needs to and uh, we'll see how we get on I'm going to bring the boat round Ian and uh, Gary are working the lock this morning so uh, I'm just going to go and uh, get Morning Star underway Now here's a novel thing <laughs> We're in Morning Star in the lock and there's its owner Ian, working the lock. <laughs> so there we go, there's Ian. Doing the paddles while I'm on the lock date, in, on the boat. And Smudge of course, he's in his usual spot, even though he's not in his usual spot on his own boat. That's where he likes to be. It's good to see that they're doing some repairs on the, uh, on the chimney. Although you can't see it at the moment, but there they are. So there's obviously some ongoing works being done there. We've just got through a massive rain shower, uh, got absolutely soaked, but as you can see now, the sun's out, it's looking quite nice, we've got clear blue sky almost above and ahead of us, and uh, Gary on Chuggabug and John and Ange on El Elstrella have now moored up by Chester Zoo, but we're continuing on. Ian's gone down to make a much needed brew so uh, all in all it's quite a pleasant day
just coming round now under the railway bridge next door to Telford's warehouse and the lock's just round the corner so uh, a bit of a tight turn but Amy Jo goes round with no bother at all revs to keep the stern round. There we have it. I'm just going to put the phone down now so I've got to get ready to go in the lock. And it was at this point that things started to go wrong. Even an experienced boater like myself get things wrong occasionally. And uh, we underestimated the power of the water leaving the lock at the bottom chamber of the boat. And as you can see, I couldn't hold the boat on the centre line and we nearly tipped the boat over. I had to let the centre line go, but then I couldn't stop the boat surging forward with the amount of water rushing underneath it and eventually Omi Jo slammed into the gate. Fortunately, I had managed to slow her down considerably so she didn't hit the gates too hard. But as you can see from the video, it got a little bit scary. Now here's the view from Ian's bow camera. And you can see just how much Amy Jo heeled over where the centre line had her tied up. I just got it untied in time. That lock's ready for us, so we're now starting to head into the first chamber. And we've been waiting underneath the railway bridge for a bit. And uh, here we go. Our lockies up there are help, ready to help us. Ian, of course, has come down again today. Right, so we're now in the bottom chamber. We've done this so many times. It's like a second home down here in this locks, but you can see the locks look deep. But if you look where the wall is, this is the first chamber, it's only this deep. It's the gates that make it look really deep. And of course, when you're with good company, it, it makes it even more interesting. Yeah. And the dogs grabbed my arm that was holding the camera, hence the shake. I don't know about the good company bit. <laughs> now, as you can see, the lock is now full. And if you look at the lock gates now, they don't look as imposing as they used to. And the same with the next sit in the middle chamber. Yeah, Sure enough, our pigeon friends are sitting there waiting to wait, ride the gate. Every year we come down to Chester, they're on the gates. Oh, there he comes. Ready to leave the, uh, the lock now. Uh, the channel narrows at this point, so we're going one at a time. Ian's going to lead the way. And uh, Estrell down there is moored up. That's John's boat. They're just helping us out the locks. So we're going to start moving on now. So that's it. The locks are done. That's Northgate deep locks for you. Now that's what you call high rise living. A lovely property there. The view from the windows must be fabulous. We're just about to go under the infamous Bridge of Sighs. I wonder how many condemned prisoners cross that the next day.
child's garden. Iceland supermarket and just up the top there is the slow boat that's one of the best Chinese restaurants in Chester just around this corner is Cow Lane Bridge our destination for today so called because in the old days cattle used to cross the bridge here just hear the cathedral bell striking 11 o'clock in the background. This pub is now called the Lock Keepers Pub. But years ago this used to be a timber wharf. Gary and Ian are already moored up. Ian's just arrived and I'm just going to moor just in front of Ian. The two boys are letting themselves known that they're in town. The Mexican massacre are letting everyone know they're there. Now, folks, all moored up by Cow Lane Bridge. Ian's just adjusting his fenders and then he's going to go shopping. We're going to pack the boat away. Mudge and I are going to go and have a cup of tea, aren't we, mate? Hey, we can have a cup of tea, aren't we? Hey. Well, there you go. We had a lucky escape there. Um, it could quite easily have gone very badly wrong but it just goes to show that you can even an experienced boater like us uh, it can easily go wrong if you your concentration goes on you um, we were lucky this time it could as I say it could have been a lot worse but uh, it just goes to show how dangerous locks are and they're not to be taken lightly but we got through it and we're still here and Amy Jo didn't suffer any damage so uh, that's that's that so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative we've had lots of really nice comments about the d-lock video um the the history of that i had great fun making that i must say uh, and uh, because of that we're hoping that we're going to do a few more historical uh, vlogs for you so i hope you look forward to them uh, but for now thank you to our patron sue marker for uh been on the team and I hope you're keeping well and staying safe and as Alan on my narrowboat venture says look after your families they are quite precious and uh, we'll see you next time on life on board Amy Joe bye for now